But then something unexpected happened. One of the girls at the river playfully splashed water on Mira. Right away, Mira started to change. Her skin began to look like fish scales and she was turning into a fish. Once upon a time in a serene African village, there lived a woman named Nia and her husband. They had been married for many years, yet they were childless. Nia had conceived several times, but each pregnancy ended in miscarriage just after a few weeks. The husband's family suggested he marry another woman, believing Nia to be a witch who used her miscarriages for witchcraft rituals. However, her husband deeply loved her and remained confident in his belief that one day Nia would bear him a child. After many years, Nia became pregnant again. The villagers, skeptical based on past events, anticipated another miscarriage. They said, this is how she always gets pregnant, but just after a few weeks, she would use it for ritual. But against all odds, Nia carried the pregnancy beyond nine months, and to the villagers' astonishment, she gave birth to twins, two beautiful girls named Mira and Nana. This was an unprecedented event in the village, as twins had never been born there before. The village rejoiced at Nia's blessing. People from all around came to her house, showering her with gifts, for twins were considered a great blessing. As Mira and Nana grew, they became beloved figures in the village. Men and women would visit just to spend time with them, some even taking them out to treat them with gifts and then returning them safely. The twins were like rays of sunshine, adored by everyone in the village. Mira and Nana, the twins, grew up and their charm was like a spell on the villagers. Everyone loved them. But one day, something strange happened that showed the villagers another side of these twins. Amanda, a well-known trader in the village, often took the twins with her. One day, she took them to the market. Unaware to Amanda, Mira and Nana started eating her food. Amanda, furious, scolded and beat them. But the twins, instead of crying, just laughed. They told Amanda that the marks from the beating would appear on her own daughter when she returned home. But Amanda dismissed their words as mere child's talk. But when Amanda got home, she was shocked. Her daughter was there, crying, with marks on her back, exactly where Amanda had beaten the twins. She couldn't understand how this happened. Amanda told the villagers about it, but nobody believed her. They thought maybe she was dreaming or making it up. But this incident changed how the village saw the twins. The more Mira and Nana grew, the more mysterious they became. Their ability to transfer pain to others sowed a mix of fear and awe in the hearts of the villagers. The twins, once seen as a blessing, were now also viewed with caution, their powers, a source of wonder and concern. As Mira and Nana, the twins grew, their mysterious powers became more noticeable. One day, they accidentally crossed paths with a feared old woman in the village, known for her harshness and quick temper. This encounter revealed yet another astonishing aspect of the twins' abilities. While playing, the twins accidentally knocked over the old woman's cooking pot spilling the porridge she was cooking. Knowing how wicked and dangerous the old woman was, they immediately apologized. They tried to explain it was a mistake, but the old woman, enraged, started to curse them and even made them kneel down, holding heavy stones as punishment. The twins, distressed with the punishment, despite their apology, uttered, a chilling curse of their own on the old woman. They declared that whenever the old woman tried to enter her hut, it would keep moving further away, always out of reach. The old woman, dismissing their words as mere childish threats, just like Amanda did, 
soon discovered the terrifying truth. As she attempted to enter her hut, it seemed to move further away, no matter how much she walked towards it. She walked and walked and walked, but her door kept getting a step further. Exhausted and frightened, she begged the twins for forgiveness. The villagers who had gathered around were astounded. The same woman who had instilled fear in them for years was now pleading with the young twins. This event significantly altered the villagers' perception of Mira and Nana. The twins, once adored for their charm, were now both revered and feared for their powers. They had made the fearsome old woman beg for mercy, something no one in the village had ever imagined possible. The twins had become powerful figures, respected and somewhat feared in the hearts of the villagers. As Mira and Nana, the twins, got older, things in the village started to change for them. The special powers that once made everyone love and pay attention to them now made people scared. The villagers who used to be charmed by the twins now kept away from them because they were afraid of what the twins could do. This fear changed how people acted around Mira and Nana. Even the young men in the village who might have liked to be their friends or more didn't want to get close to them anymore. Being near the twins and their strange powers was too scary for them. So Mira and Nana started to feel alone. Their powers, which were amazing, made it hard for them to make friends or be close to anyone. Feeling lonely and wanting to be just like other young people in the village, Mira and Nana wished they could play, laugh, and make friends without making others scared. They wanted a normal life, just like everyone else. This wish made them think about breaking one important rule their mother had always told them, never to go near the river. Their mom was always very serious about this rule, but she never told them why. Being curious and wanting to change their lonely life, Mira and Nana decided to go to the river, a place they had always been told to avoid. This choice, made because they wanted to escape their loneliness, was the beginning of a big change in their lives. Mira and Nana, excited for an adventure and wanting to fit in, made their way to the river. The river was always busy with people washing, swimming, and having fun in the cool water. The twins wanted to be a part of this, to play and be like the other villagers, without worries or fears. At first, the presence of the twins caused fear and confusion. People began to leave, packing up their belongings and quickly moving away from the water. The twins, however, called out to them, pleading for a chance to be seen as just another part of the community. They assured everyone that they meant no harm. They only wanted to play and share in the joy of the river. Slowly, some people decided to stay. They were careful at first, but then things started to feel normal again. The twins were laughing and playing with the others, and it looked like their dream of being just like everyone else was coming true. But then, something unexpected happened. One of the girls at the river playfully splashed water on Mira. Right away, Mira started to change. Her skin began to look like fish scales, and she was turning into a fish. Nana, trying to help her sister, also touched the water and started changing too. Everyone was scared and didn't know what to do. They ran to get Nia, the twins' mother. When Nia came, she saw her daughters turning into river creatures. She was heartbroken, crying as she watched this strange thing happening to her daughters. Her sadness filled the air by the river, showing how helpless she felt as her daughters changed in a way no one could understand. When Mira and Nana changed at the river, everyone in the village was shocked and confused. In all this trouble, the village priest came up with a big secret about the twins. 
He said that Mira and Nana were actually children of the river goddess. This was a secret Nia, their mother, had kept to herself because she was so scared. Nia then told everyone the truth. She was so afraid of losing her husband and her place in the village that she had gone to see an herbalist a long time ago. The herbalist asked the river goddess to give Nia children, but there was one big rule. The children must never touch the river or they would go back to the river goddess. There was no way to change the twins back and now everyone knew they belonged to the river goddess. But there's more to the story. Nia, desperate to help her daughters, went to find the herbalist who had helped her before. But when she got to the herbalist's place, she found out he had died a few years ago. There was no other way to help the twins. With no other way, the village had to make a very sad choice. With lots of crying and praying, they took Mira and Nana back to the river, giving them back to the goddess. But then something amazing happened. The river took Mira and made her one of its own, but it sent Nana back to land as a human again. Everyone was amazed to see the power and kindness of the river goddess. Nia and Nana hugged each other on the riverbank, both happy and sad. They had gone through so much. They had to learn how to live with missing Mira, who was now part of the river and remember everything that had happened. Nia learned a big lesson, to always wait for God's time because it is always the best. You see, the story of Mira and Nana, the twins people once called evil, turned into a story about love, trust, and accepting things in the village. It showed that sometimes the best things happen in ways you don't expect and that life's mysteries can teach important lessons. Nia and Nana, their lives changed by what they went through, found peace and learned to be thankful every day. They always felt a special connection to the river, which had given them so much and also taken away. I hope you enjoyed the tale. If so, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss out on the next one. Goodbye.